What's going on YouTube? Uh, it's been a minute since I've uh, uploaded something where I'm actually talking uh, in it. I've been doing lots of traveling and playing, so I usually upload that kind of stuff. But I found an old video uh, of myself talking about uh, advice and points on uh, when you're uh, trying out new instruments and, and looking for a new horn. Uh, vintage or not vintage, uh, um, I have a good amount of experience now uh, trying out horns and such. And even when I filmed this video, I had just purchased a Mark VI. Uh, and kind of want to talk about my experience with doing that, but I get this question a lot, you know, like what should I think about when trying a horn? How should I compare them? So this is just some points, some advice uh, that I think is important when, when looking for a new horn, trying out a new horn. Uh, I filmed this back when I was living in Florida in my old studio. Uh, this is my new space. I hope to be, uh, you know, filming more things like this in the future because now I'm not going to be on the road. Uh, I'm going to be home in Boston now for a few months, so I hope to be uh, having some more time to do YouTube again. Like I said, enjoy the video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'll be posting hopefully more videos like this and um, yeah thanks for watching got a kind of different topic um, today not really necessarily in the playing portion of the jazz world but we're gonna talk about horn selection and horns based uh, and how to like really find the right horn for you and what to look for in a horn uh, I know that this is something that I struggled especially when I was younger and uh, we're gonna talk about my biggest key things to look for in horns, vintage and modern. Let's go. The biggest thing to think about when picking out a horn, not looking at the logo, not looking at what you're uh, playing. You know, obviously price point is a big thing, but you want to be comfortable. It, it shouldn't matter what kind of horn it is. It shouldn't matter really what brand, unless you know it's an untrusted brand, but it shouldn't really matter. The point is you want to make sure that you're getting a saxophone that fits you and your ear. Uh, I will say this uh, saxophone, I've been testing in and out um, of my life now for, geez, probably since 2015. Um, I had the opportunity to play this Mark VI in high school a little bit, and uh, I really liked it, but I didn't have the money at the time. Uh, and what I did when I decided to buy it uh, two months ago, or whatever it was, I decided to come back uh, to the guy, get this horn, and go try some other Mark VI's. This is a six-digit Mark VI. Um, they're supposedly, you know, not the holy grail ones that they, you know, the five-digit ones are the best, no matter what. And I think that's a common uh, misconception. I've played some five-digit Mark VI's that I've hated. I've played some uh, Mark VII's that have been great, you know what I mean? Uh, so when it comes to, especially vintage horns, don't look at the serial number, don't look at the year, just play it. Um, I have a buddy of mine that owns a, you know, a holy grail, uh, super balanced action, and I don't like it really that much, and it's supposed to be like one of the best horns ever made. You know, everybody's got their own preference. Um, so that's a big thing. Don't worry about the logo, don't worry about the year, just play them. And, number two, play a bunch of horns side by side, if you have the opportunity to. Music stores like Music and Arts or um, Sam Ash or down here, or, you know, a lot of vintage like Boston Sack Shop or... Uh, JL Woodwinds up in New York. All these guys have a bunch of horns out. You know, Roberto wins. I would try and test things side by side just so you really, really know um, the differences between the two. Videotape on your phone. Phones are like the best thing to bring to these things because you can literally, you know, send videos to whoever and hey, what do you think about this? What do you know? I, I FaceTime one of my friends when I was doing this um, or have someone with you, you know. But Make sure that you have other horns to try out. If you're trying to upgrade your horn, bring the horn that you already have when you're going to do the upgrade. So that way you know what you're putting yourself up against. Um, so that would be number two. The last thing, which is almost an obvious thing, but make sure you bring your equipment that you are playing on currently. Uh, whether it's a mouthpiece, and I don't care if you're gonna switch mouthpieces when you get the new horn, bring the mouthpiece that you've been playing on so that the comparisons between the horn that you have and the horn that you wanna get is uh, is 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 matched, so you kind of know exactly what you're getting. Um, also, I guess another another thing, look at the uh, the quality of where the horns in. I bought mine, and it was in pretty good shape, but definitely not super good playing shape. So I decided, hey, I'm gonna buy this, but I'm gonna send it up to get an overhaul at Boston Sack Shop. Now you don't have to send it up to Boston Sack Shop. I would recommend it but your local repair person, think about when you're buying this, the horn that you're buying, that 
uh, if it needs repair and see if the seller will say, hey, you know, I think this kind of needs some repair. The pads are looking a little weird. You know, there's some bloated ones. There's some dehydrated ones. Do you think I can get a lower price because I have to go get this repaired? You know, negotiate on it. Now, obviously, if you're buying a modern horn, then, you, you know, you're going to get what you pay for and you're going to get hopefully a brand new one, you know. Uh, that's more for if you're gonna buy a used one on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or anything, which I really wouldn't recommend unless you could actually go and play it. Um, but, you know, just be careful with that. So those are my three tips. First, don't look at the logo, don't look at the year. Just play it and see if you feel comfortable because I've made mistakes on that before. Uh, two, compare horns if you can. Don't buy the first one. You know, that, that would be, a, that's a really good piece of advice. Don't buy the first horn that you fall in love with because there might be a better one. Give yourself a couple weeks, maybe, or a couple days at least, to go out and try other horns. That's super, super important. And then three, make sure you bring the setup that you're currently playing on. Uh, and look at the uh, quality of the horn, if you're buying a used or vintage horn. Um, where are the pads at? And, you know, where are the springs at? Am I gonna have to get this repaired in the next two months, you know? Uh, and then negotiate with the person that you're going with. And, you know, hopefully you can get as happy as you are, as I am with this thing. You know, this is going to be hopefully a lifetime horn. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, thank you to Jack at Boston Sack Shop for hooking it up. I couldn't be happier. <laughs> so I hope this helps, guys. Uh, please keep leaving comments in the description and let me know what else you want to talk about. Decided to kind of do a change of pace here and just kind of talk to you guys about this sort of thing. But um, let me know what else you guys want and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>